It is a wonderful day on the patio in southern Spain. The climate for orchid growing is perfection. And Mary G. Orchids and more just so happens to be my favorite person today because she has given me the opportunity to gush, geek, and coo over my <laughs> ridiculous lalias. She asked for an update. So, Thank you, Mary G. Orchids and more, for making my day. <laughs> There's a lot to cover. I'm going to try and be brief, precise. All the things that I struggle with when it comes to Rapiculus Lelias. So I'm going to update you on what is going on in my collection. The brief could be an issue because there is so much going on. <laughs> so we better get on with it. Right out of the gate, my Lelia Regentii. I have a third one, but nothing going on with that third one. However, if you look at this little pairing here, which one of the two is a Regentii? Which one is the imposter? Now, my other Regentii looks like this one right here. But this one is also labeled Regentii. So <laughs> we'll have to wait and see until it blooms to see if this one really is a Regentii or not. Now, don't think that this one's getting more light than this one. They live under the same conditions with the same amount of light and shade. I have to do that just to be very, very sure that this is not anthocyanin because of higher light. Anywho, <laughs> imposter or not, Regentii over here, has got three new growths coming. It is absolute insanity. Right there, one, two, three. Like little soldiers all lined up. That's the way uh, ha, uh, ha, I like it. Uh, ha, uh, ha. Okay, Regentii numero deux has two new growths coming. And this was a piece that was languishing for a long, long time. And yes, this is one of my OG Regentii's that I've had since 2020. So languishing no more. We are good to go with these two. Up next, languishing for a very long time, since 2019. An OG in my collection, this is Lelia Kautskiana. And oh boy, I had a feeling we were not going to get this one through. But lo and behold, look what is happening here. This is fabulous. I've lost pseudobulbs in the back. I've lost leaves. I had a little bit of a thrips attack because, you know, weak orchids <laughs> and the bugs come a run in. But ha, huh, this is promising. This is looking good. We did get this nice growth right here. That was last year. And I thought it would drain the energy and we would have no more coming from this orchid because it was losing pseudobulbs in the back while it was growing this new growth but it is holding on beautifully and this new growth, well, I think we're on to a winner here. Thank goodness, it's only been since 2019 that we are now starting to gain some momentum. If you were somebody that actually gifted me a Rapiculus Lelia, stay tuned, <laughs> stay tuned. You will not be disappointed. Anyway, this little one here is my Albarenguensis. It's a little bit disappointing that it didn't bloom for us this season, but hey, we've got a new growth coming. Beautiful little pink blooms I absolutely adore with a very, very long spike. I was really hoping that this growth would actually bloom, but it decided to skip a year as long as it's doing well, and it is. Anybody that is not into Rapiculus Lelias and is still watching, Thank you so, so much for being here. I appreciate the support. Right, here we have a little shabby looking one, and this is my Rupestris. My Rupestris has been languishing also since 2019, like the Kautskiana. Well, <clears throat> it doesn't exactly look the part at the moment, but oh boy, have we had developments, even though this new growth that it tried to develop and somewhat succeeded in developing is taking out the back end. You see how stressed these pseudobulbs are? Mm, a little bit concerning, but whew, I'm hopeful. I'm really hopeful. The fact I even moved this one, yeah, that means I'm hopeful because these two roots are the first ones I see that are of substance. As you can see, Rapiculus lelias can be tough little cookies. Oh, but if they're under duress, yeah, getting them to bounce back can take quite some time. Anyway, good news on the Rupestris. Even though I don't like the overall visual at the moment, I'm still a little concerned. <clears throat> Fingers crossed. 
If you've been following my channel for a while and have seen my Rapiculus collection grow and develop and to some degree fail, <laughs> well, here's one of my little favorites. Has never bloomed for me, but I just love it. This is Lelia Blumenshiny Eye, and she is cooking with gas. <laughs> Not something you really could say with Rapiculus Lelias, but you know, every new growth is a milestone. And this is the mother plant of the one that I have with the back bulb that fell off and that I'm propagating indoors, trying to be super uber duper careful with it, see if it survives. But mama's doing well. So I'm really pleased to see that she is not looking stressed at all. And back to if you're new to my channel and are wondering what is going on here. Yes, I am into Rapiculus Lelias. I am totally gaga about them. But I also grow them differently. I grow them in lava rock, little ceramis, and to some degree Akadama in semi-hydro. So this is not a wet dry cycle with the exception of what nature then does when they live outdoors during the winter. And this is my fornery. This one has also been languishing for quite some time, also an OG 2019. We are starting to come onto our own because we've got root growth and we've got a new growth. And it's the first time this orchid is kind of showing me progress instead of this sulk, yeah, I'm gonna grow a new growth and I'm gonna grow it stunted, then I'm going to dump my roots and all that fun stuff that can happen when an orchid is stressed out. <laughs> 2023, I mean, hello. Fornery is looking better than ever. Oh, a little one that has me a bit concerned is my Lelia Itambana. Ooh, she was doing so well. So I'm not entirely sure what is going on here. It's just a matter of observation and babying the new growth that is right here on the front part. There are two pieces in here. She fell apart, but she never really struggled for me until this year. So we do have some roots, but they're not really anything to write home about. I'm losing this piece because I've seen many leaves pop off the back pseudobulbs. This piece, yeah, the roots are hydrating. I just flushed them earlier this morning, so there's still some residual moisture in the pot. But yeah, this Mm, I'm concerned. I don't want to lose it. It is so difficult to recuperate the little ones when they're tiny like this. Very, very grateful though that this one piece here is growing a new growth. Oh, just make sure that it matures and nothing happens to it. So fingers crossed that Itambana bounces back. Boop. <laughs> Lelia Harpophila. Look at that new growth. Now, she has really gained momentum as well. I got two new growths during the season of 2022. That was the first, both bloomed, and then she's also rocking her third growth. Well, first one for 2023, but they're coming now back to back to back to back. And I was banging on about light training because of orchids positioned in the pot, where we say, put them at the end, let them work their way towards the middle of the pot, etc. Well, if I had put this orchid into the middle of the pot, I wouldn't have to worry about the trajectory of the growth. But so far you can see, she was about to curl over into that direction, heading towards the edge. And then with light training, you can see this growth here. <clears throat> yeah, we brought it back. And now we've got this new growth <laughs> right here. I'm hoping that that's fine. And then the next one will be over here. So bit by bit, trying to tease the rhizome to go where I want it to. <laughs> that is the long-term goal with this one because there's no need to repot her at all. Love me, my Harpophila. Cool orchid. Something super interesting, in my opinion, is happening with my Esalkiana. Now, because of the determination that Rapiculus Lelias have, it is always fascinating to watch how they deal with obstacles. And this one always gave me two new growths in tandem, like twins, you know, always coming out in pairs, two, two. And you can see how close it is up to the edge of the pot. You can also see the rocks that are now really pushing onto those pseudobulbs. So I was wondering, should I up pot her, make space for new growth, see what happens? Well, I'm taking a gamble here because I want to learn something about Rapiculus Lelias and see how tenacious they can be and how they overcome obstacles. So one of my little ones here is growing a new growth. Okay, right uh, there. 
All right, so I'm like, okay, now what? What are you doing? I can't see any new growth and I'm wondering if it's because the rocks are stopping a new growth from developing. Well, in true fashion, Rapiculus Lelia fashion, I wonder if you can see that little pointy bit back, like, uh, back in here. There's a little itty bitty tiny pointy bit on a bit of lava rock <laughs> that is totally wedged in, but that is a new growth. You see how it's lifted that lava rock up? Ooh, now I can lift it up. Oh, I can free it. Good. Happy days. The other day, I couldn't free that. It was too tight, but the little growth managed to push it out of the way. Well, we've given it some space. Problem solved. But you see, they are so tenacious. This is what I love about them. In cultivation, they get the five-star treatment, but out in nature, oh, they have to deal with a lot. And yes, that's why I also have a lot of singed leaves because I push my orchids to see how much light they can take. Lesson learned, this one not so much, but isn't that wonderful? I think you can see the new growth and there's another one. Now, it would be nice to see if this one would produce a new growth and where it would come from, but it's compensating with a second new growth elsewhere. Love it. So this lower shelf, is where the ones we just looked at lived. And forgive me for not taking out my little Ketiana. She's blooming again with two spikes. <laughs> this is a first. Not a first time blooming, but first time with two spikes. I am not moving her up to show you her on the staging area because the last time I did that with a Gilianii, the blooming didn't last very long. So I want the other buds to open. I don't want them to blast. But isn't this just the cutest ever? But wait. There's more. And thank you if you stuck around. Would you give this video a like, please? Thank you so much. Subscribe to the channel. Follow the progress of my Rapiculus Lelias. Ask any questions you may have about them. I love to geek out over them, as you can probably tell. <laughs> These ones never get boring for me. <laughs> if I could do the mother hen noise, I would be clucking around them because that's what I do. That's how I feel when I'm dealing with Rapiculus Lelias. Anywho. On the top shelf, I have the crispata. Now, it hasn't bloomed for me, but it has grown a wonderful new growth. Two, as a matter of fact, but the other one's a little bit more stout. In the back, I've got Lelia flava, which bloomed for us last year, but also, like the albaranguensis, decided to skip a year, take a break, whatever, you do you, boo, just live. So, the growths have matured, but they haven't bloomed. In the front here, this is Lelia Millery. I am so happy with the progress of this orchid and you may look at it and go, what's the point? Well, <laughs> put yourself in my shoes. <laughs> I got this one as a patetico little thing in 2021 and it was a nightmare to get it going. It has been indoors since 2021. This is the first season it's coming outdoors and it is growing roots now and the growth that grew after the thrips attack, that's growing beautifully. Since then it grew another growth that is growing beautifully. Eh, dare I say we're on our way. Fingers crossed. Moving on to the next one that you see over here. This is Lelia Gracilis 2.0. This is her second blooming courtesy of Michael McCarthy, Melissa Walker, and the Orchid Room. She is doing fabulously. She is for the first time also spiking with two spikes. Not a first time bloom, but it's the first time with two spikes. Progress, I love it. What a difference it makes when you get a healthy Rapiculus Lelia, get them settled in fast without having to be too concerned. So Gracilis, we shall be graced with some blooms very shortly. Now I'm going to scooch in a little bit closer if I can without doing any destruction of anything that is behind me, because here's the next one. This one is Millery crossed with long geeps. Now, this one was gifted to me by Michael McCarthy and Larry Jones because there was a possibility that my Millery, which is over here, would not make it. And at least, they said, at least then you have something Millery in your collection, even though it's a primary hybrid. Millery crossed with long geeps has me a little concerned. It is growing well-ish. It could grow so much better. It is very tentatively growing new roots, very slowly. I am losing some leaves, I'm losing some back bulbs. I lost a new growth, 
early in the season that I thought was going to make it. I believe that I had a pest in here. It was possibly thrips. I cannot confirm. Whatever it is, it is gone. And it didn't attack the other new growth that it was growing, which has not yet opened its leaf. However, on this side right here, it's starting a new growth. So the signs are positive. I am hopeful, fingers crossed, that I'm not proven wrong. Michael McCarthy and Larry Jones also then gifted me a Lelia Angareri right here. This one is a nemesis of mine. I lost my OG to the fact that I couldn't get it to recover from the stressful situation it found itself in when it arrived in my collection. Tried for a year and a half, I think, and then eventually it collapsed. So unfortunate. I got a real thing for this Angareri. This was the orchid that actually prompted an order with Floralia. The fact it didn't make it made it even more so that I wanted it. <laughs> anyway, she's doing well. She is not languishing. She grew a new growth that matured beautifully, is growing tentatively new roots. I am looking forward to the next growth and then we should be happy. What I'm seeing here is not a leaf from the Angareri. I believe that blew over from the Millery crossed with long geeps. Then, Entsfeldsjai. Sorry for the jiggle. Right here. Growing a fabulous new growth. Didn't bloom for us this season, unfortunately. Some orchids seem to be skipping a season. Let's hope they will bloom for us next season. But the new growth, it grew at the time right here. It grew well and it's on its way with another stonking new growth. Are you still with me? <laughs> All right, but wait. <laughs> How much time have you got? <laughs> There's more. I will show these to you with regards to images because the lower shelf, everything gets a little bit precarious and crowded. Very happy to say that my Catlia Kolnagoi is growing another new growth and it has a sheath in it. It's looking wonderful. Lelia Brade is going nuts and we have buds. We have a first time blooming opportunity here with Lelia Brade. I had three new growths from it late last year in 2022. This year it came out with all guns blazing with about five new growths. And on top of that, one of them is hopefully going to bloom for us if it has the energy to do that. This orchid had to root entirely, completely and all over again. It has done so. It's fantastic. So happy to see that. My Flava Solina has always been one of those ones that has also been languishing. It is growing a new growth right at the front lead. Other than that, nothing. I had a massive scale infestation on this one. Could have been a little bit of setback there, but I've never seen scale on this orchid once I treated it. Catlia Honey from Anonymous is doing fabulously. I do not see any sheaths or any spikes, but it has been growing three new growths. A fourth one is now already on the way. This orchid, sensational, completely impressed by it. <laughs> Absolutely love it. And we're going to go back to the staging area because I just saw something that I can't show you in an image. Lelia Regina was doing so, so well. She's also an OG from 2019. She bloomed for us also in the year of 2021, I believe. And since then, it's like mwah, 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 to the point I was getting very concerned. The front lead here is very loose. The back lead is a little bit more stronger. To my recollection, she skipped a year with growth last year in 2022. But now, thankfully, she's starting with a new growth right here and a new growth right there. And I needed to show that to you because this orchid had had me a little bit on the edge of my seat, to be quite honest. It's, um, yeah, some of these are not easily replaceable. So this is good news. And that's why I brought you back out to show you up close that, whew, I think, at least for now, she's still okay. And well, <laughs> in order to get the Regina out, I had to move Lucasiana. So I just thought while we're here in the beautiful sunshine with beautiful Rapiculus Lelias doing beautiful things, <laughs> why not show you in a real time? Here, yeah, she's got a new growth coming. This is fabulous. I wonder if she is going to bloom with this new growth. I mean, it's big enough. The orchid is big enough. And lo and behold, I'm so glad I brought her out. There is a second new growth in the back. I can't believe it. Eek, there. That is awesome. There's a third new growth, you guys. You see, 
The position of the ribiculus lalius that I have is in order for them to grow into the pot and make sure that the back of the leaves are always facing the light. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I look at her like this. This is my visual of her because her source of light when she's on the shelf is right here. <laughs> So all that I saw all the time was one new growth and you guys on the road to discovery, Mary G. Orchids and more. <laughs> I owe you. <laughs> this is amazing. Totally, totally escaped my visual. And this one I thought we just discovered as well. It was only the second one. Applause, applause, Lucasiana, three new growths. Maybe, just maybe, one will bloom for us. That would be awesome. That would be a first time as well. <laughs> but wait, there's more. <laughs> My Sangiloba 2.0, because a pup thought that it would be great for his digestive system to take out my OG Sangiloba. Very tentative recovery on this one, but recovery it is. She is growing another new growth that looks so much better than anything that she came with. So that would be two new growths in my care since she arrived as a very pathetic or sorry looking little sangiloba. I thought that would go the same way as my OG Angereri did, but nope, she's doing great. My Lelia Mantecari is growing a fabulous new growth. It looks akin to something like a bamboo shoot, <laughs> something you would harvest early so you could put it into your stir fry. Amazing, happy. But here is something that I would like to show anonymous. Thank you anonymous for Lelia Kautskiana or Kautskiai or Kautsky something or other. It could be a duplicate of what I already have. We don't know, but if this is a duplicate, then mine is a pygmy and this one is the Goliath of the Kautskianas. But look what it's doing. I wanted to wait for this update until my Rapiculus Lelius had bloomed out, but I don't know who takes so long to bloom and well, it's better to get them documented now while they're doing this so that we have something to look forward to in the future. And if you haven't subscribed, remember, follow the progress. Do that, please subscribe. Then you won't miss when they do bloom out. This would be a first time bloomer on the patio as far as Rapiculus Lelia Kautskiana is concerned. She is huge. I lost two leaves very, very quickly. Her second growth with me is substantially bigger than her first growth with me. I know it's all a little bit cumbersome in this corner. I don't want to move her as you can tell for reasons. If that breaks, I'm going to be so annoyed with myself. And for that reason, we are quetched into the cool de sac of the blooming alley to admire a spike. <laughs> I know it doesn't seem to be a lot, but for me, this is epic. Not a Rapiculus Lelia, but I thought if you stayed all the way to the end, I would treat you to a visual of my gorgeous Epidendrum Parkinsonianum blooms that are still looking marvelous in my blooming alley cool de sac. Absolutely love them. If you have any questions, <laughs> you can also question my demeanor, but <laughs> I hope I explained myself right out of the gate. But if you want to question anything, <laughs> Let me know in the comments anything about Rapiculus Lelius, anything that comes to mind. Just say hi. Let me know how you're doing. All that fun stuff. I love hearing from you. I want to say thank you if you've made it to the end. And I want to thank Mary G. Orchids and more one more time for requesting this video. <laughs> Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. <laughs>